Welcome to Vinted with Scout Driscoll. Come along with me on my journey into the wine world, where I share thoughtful conversations with wine industry leaders. Get ready for marketing insights from branding and design to sales and social media. And the answer to the ultimate question, what moves wine? Hi everyone, I'm Scout Driscoll, founder of Vint Studio and host of Vinted, where we chat about all things wine design and sales. Past episodes include conversations with Vint's dedicated brand strategist, Amanda Wurzbach. And just last week on the show, we had Tank Garage Winery's VP of Marketing, Ed Fuchuk. On today's episode, we'll be talking all about wine marketing with Lori Milote, founder of Outshinery. But before we dive into that conversation, here's a quick note from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Vint Wine Branding and Design, where rich storytelling meets smart design. At Vint, our studio goes beyond the label, guiding wine brands through strategy-rich branding and packaging evolutions. Our work with Cooper's Hawk has helped them grow the nation's largest wine club to over 450,000 members. You can learn more about Vint at vint.studio, or for a free label audit for your brand, email me directly at hello at vint.studio. So I'm super excited for today's guest, uh, Lori Milo, founder and chief amazement officer at Outshinery, the best title ever, Lori, a uh, <laughs> pixel perfect bottle shot CGI company. A problem solver at heart, Lori created out Shinery after observing how wineries were missing out on sales and distribution opportunities due to lack of quality visual content, which I think is something that every winery can identify with. So welcome to the show, Lori. I'm so excited to have you today. I'm super pumped to be here as well. Yeah. So Lori and I connected a couple, almost a year ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a wonderful conversation just to meet each other. And I remember hanging up that Zoom thinking, Oh, I should start a podcast just to have her on the show. (laughs) So, my French accent? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Her French accent. Um, Also, for those of you who don't know, my studio is right next to the train in Chicago. So, if you hear that roar of the Metra (laughs) a couple times, apologies. Um, But so, Lori and I had a great conversation just talking about all things, you know, what it means to, you know, love design in the wine world, connecting with wineries, helping boost and grow wineries, which is a huge passion of mine, which is literally Mm -hmm. why this podcast exists. So, so happy to have you on the show. Um, I would love for you to start by talking a little bit about, you know, your your origin story and also just literally what Outshinery is and what you do for wineries. It would be my pleasure. So my name is Laurie, as you mentioned, and I come not unlike you from a designer background. So I studied graphic design in Paris, um, French from, from Burgundy originally. So I started drinking from a very young age, but it's okay in France, like totally <laughs> allowed. Um, <laughs> At the time, it was anyway. And then I moved to Canada and started designing wine labels for the new world. One of my uh, mission was not to design boring French wine labels. So that was just like really, really fun because I just got to combine, you know, my love for design and wine. And that was maybe 15 years ago, maybe going on 16, I, I lost track. And I'm still in that world. And one thing I noticed um, is more and more frustration around the quality of bottled photography. Uh, I think, you know, if you're a winery, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a bit like taking a selfie in a house of mirrors. Mm-hmm. It's highly reflective. It's transparent. It's just like a nightmare all around. And that is not even counting the issue of like shipping bottles as a photographer, waiting for the bottling truck to actually does, you know, go by, do its work. And it's just, you know, just over the top complicated um that that was my frustration and it has been a, like a few years with that pain uh for my portfolio purposes but also more and more for my winery clients themselves you know dtc sales were ramping up finding distributors i wanted to represent you properly you know like it's just providing this quality images starting with bottle shot um is crucial like it's it can look a bit shallow and it maybe not be you know, feel right because the liquid should speak for itself, but that's the reality of the world we live in. There's no shortage of wine and your packaging and therefore the representation of your packaging in photography is crucial. So long story short, for when I was taking the pictures myself in the back of the design studio, hated it, the opposite of being creative. (laughs) And even that was super, super challenging. I live in Vancouver, Canada, so when I work with wineries in Napa, let's say, getting the wine even to me was just like a nightmare. And um, and even I was having a hard time maintaining consistency. I could get bottle shots pretty okay, like, you know, the first shoot. And then so the needs of white six months later were coming and I needed to make the bottle look the same. And, and it just couldn't be. Of course, the tripod moves. Of course, the camera is a bit move. 
even though the light are artificial, like they move and everything a little bit, and then it's just kind of slowly but surely like dilute the quality. The online store didn't look as good. When you want to do like paid ads, then the images are a bit clumsy. And then repeat again and again, because I love winemakers, but they look like they never also run out of ideas of new blend and new wines or new vineyards to try. So it, it just keeps on repeating. That issue was not one time and forget about it. It's just every few months, the same issue arrived. Um, and then one day I went to the movies. Uh, I was living uh, abroad at the time and I went to see Jurassic World. So that gives you a bit of an idea like the, mm-hmm. of the time frame. And I just left the theater thinking, oh my goodness, we can do CGI dinosaurs that look pretty great. Like I know the dinos are not with the actors right now, obviously, yeah. but it's believable. Like it works. Like, so I thought, surely there must be a way to combine that technology, bring it to the wine industry so that it's um, cost efficient and finally like a, a turnkey solution, no matter where you're located, no matter how late or behind your bottling is so you can get um, your bottle images. So that's how it started with an idea, made it happen. And I think last time I checked, uh, we have a little bit of a 600 different wineries, which represents like a little bit of a 2,000 wine brands, effectively, since wineries have a lot of different product. And wow. we're just getting started. <laughs> nice. Bravo. So when did I try to restart? Uh, <laughs> five years ago, like four years ago, four I years ago. Too. My, yeah, yeah my, just I can't do the math right now. <laughs> I know. My 19th anniversary is next week. And uh, oh, every other day, I'm like 18, 20, 18. <laughs> I don't know. And honestly, the last two years are still a bit of a blur too. Like, it, like it's yeah. just like time is all about perception sometime. And I'm very confused about it right now. Yeah. <laughs> so four years going on five. So that's, yeah. Wow. And it's, you know, I feel like one of my favorite things about Of China, right beyond the amazing collection of imagery that you offer. And, and also I love that you kind of protect people's regions in a way, and you won't let two, two competitive wineries in one region share the same art, which is really thoughtful. And it, it's so much more than just your standard you know, stock website. Um, yeah. So like what you're speaking about right now is like what we offer beside bottle shots, bottle shots, I call it, you know, keeping on the, on the metaphor of Hollywood in the movies, like casting Tom Hanks, yeah. you know, like you need to get your actor right. This is how Tom Hanks looks like. That's your bottle. And this you need because you need on your, on your resume, right? Think of all your marketing material, collateral, even your distributors, but even beyond like Instacart, like, you know, all of these different channels, yeah. uh, but those are a bit dry and not evocative. Like they just, that's the whole point of a bottle shot to be like pure unaltered representation of your product. Um, but then what we mentioned a bit is we also do what we call lifestyle images, which is where this time we work with talented photographers from around the world and uh, stylists. So that, those are the people that bring props and plates uh, food, like all what you can think that goes into a shot. Uh, and then they, they set photo shoots for us where, again, back to this, you know, move metaphor, it's set the decor and then we just drop, you know, if you're in the Havengers, uh, you just drop the Hulk in the scene, which would be your bottle. So that's how we just say, hey, I want my Pinot Noir to be on a table amongst friends. That doesn't look um, terrible. So think not ice stock or those yeah. terrible images. And then we just drop your, your very own bottle in the shot. And the result is just, it's a composite image, but it looks like the real thing. So you can get a final high quality image, uh, usually between three to five business days. Um, and, you know, without having to organize a photo shoot, without having to ship samples yeah. and all that, you know, nightmare organization um, that way. Yeah. And this exactly, like you mentioned, we limit, like we're conscious that, you know, the geography, like, you know, we work with a lot of wineries uh, in Napa, let's say. So it's a bit of a rush, especially in the California <laughs> area. Like, it's just like, oh, like, we're releasing new lifestyle images, first come, first serve. So the wineries are just like, oh, I want to use this for my Chardonnay. Actually, maybe not Napa, that would be more Sonoma, uh, but it exists for my Cabernet Sauvignon. And then they just kind of claim the images, and then nobody else in that area uh, would be able to reuse it. But then we have a winery in Spain you know, totally different market, different segment. They want to feature that Zamplanillo be our guest. So that's how we kind of like have efficiency of cost and also, um, you know, protection, find this fine balance. So thoughtful. 
Also, <laughs> you're literally putting me out of business. Not, not literally. I'm not going out of business, but, but we just, you know, so we, with one of our clients, we just had, you know, a $50,000 one day photo shoot where we had all kinds Very of talent expensive. and hair and makeup. And we art directed the entire shoot and it was an amazing day. And the product is so great. Like we had we probably had 300 photographs that are like amazing, but it was an investment. And we have been, you know, nurturing that client to invest that kind of money in a photo shoot for a very long time. So for you to provide that access to lifestyle imagery, that's on trend, that's diversified, that has all the pieces that people need. Uh, it's such an affordable rate. It's just really, really um, pretty amazing. So, so thank you for you know, helping yeah. my clients. And, you know, like, and it just, I just get very excited because that's also like a way to be creative. Like I just love wine as a product and it does not have to be on a barrel with cheese and grapes, you know, like yeah. it's just it's so much more than that. So much more fun or sometimes so much more elevated. So really um, helping being creative, like you mentioned in that, you know, in that spectrum, like some, you know, we have bottles floating in the air because sometimes, especially right now, there's a lot of like locale, low alcohol wine is like how do you communicate that on a way that is uh up and coming and we also work um you know we, we try different things we work even with a recipe developer uh that's herself work with a stylist and a photographer and we develop like wine centric recipes so they're not just for your winery but this is a recipe that is meant for uh, let's say like fruity Pinot Noir and like we kind of really give all the cues and then you can safely like pick that recipe, feature your wine in that recipe, you know, with an image and choose if you want imperial or metric, <laughs> you know, depending on your market uh, oh, and yeah, yeah. you have that communication and you have this, all this process that would be so prohibitive for a winery to start from scratch. Uh, you know, we, we turn it around uh, in a few business days and for a fraction of the cost. And then just, just putting it out there, maybe for those who are hearing this podcast, what we are starting to work on in 2022 is working with local photographers, um, you know, that can go uh, on site at the wineries. There's no denial that, you know, there's a sense of place and yeah. terroir and, you know, however you want to call those, um, you know, adjectives uh, winery related. And the idea is like to have them go on site, take pictures, but again, with our chinery in mind so that, you know, the photo shoot you just organized is all happening, but then throughout the years to come, we just yeah. place the bottle that is relevant at that time of the communication. And here's the taste, like the tasting room. We really want to highlight our Merlot. Let's just using CGI and, you know, drop a bottle of Merlot, crop it and put it in the email newsletter. And then maybe that same image in six months time, like, you know what, we really want to focus on Christmas and we have these new gift boxes same decor, it's just drop CGI. So it's still, this would be like asset that really belong just to you, uh, the winery. And um, that's something that we are working behind the scene right now that just get me really excited because then I just get to work with super talented, creative people that do their work. Because often when I speak to them, they enjoy the whole photo shoot. The part they hate is getting that bottle right. <laughs> You know, with all the reflection, like, oh, this, you don't have to worry. We'll take care of that. It's like, amazing. <laughs> it's like that one fingerprint or my, my personal pet peeve is like screw cap capsules where, where like, they're never straight. Like you can't like, yeah. cause they only go on in one spot in the bottle and you can't really control where the label lands on the glass. Yeah. And it's like, no matter what that logo is like one degree <laughs> off center or, or the seam in the glass the or the 750 glass. milliliter, like. So I, I totally, like you're speaking my language. I love all of this. Um, and also the, I, I'm so excited about that new development because I can't tell you, I mean, we probably do four or five photo shoots a year for Cooper talk. And mm -hmm. a lot of them are very much focused on, you know, one season or it's one featured wine of the month, et cetera. And it would be so nice to have all of the things that go behind it, behind it, the evergreen and be able mm -hmm. to swap out that wine because once they release a wine club wine, it's gone Go unless it's becoming, you know, part of their everyday collection. So um, we invest all this money and time into photography, but then it's just so quickly antiquated. So to shoot that Cooper's Talk lifestyle and on brand, then also know that the wine can be popped in and out as their varietals change or as different wines are produced um, is huge. So I just yeah. love like, again, you're taking all of these like authentic needs of your industry, our industry, and like really serving them and meeting them where they are. So kudos on all of that, in, you know, problem Thank solving you. and development. It's so inspirational. Um, it's fun. Most of the days. <laughs> I know. Well, that's entrepreneurism. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's running a business. Uh, awesome. So I think one of the things I was excited to talk about with you too was you just 
you know, I mean, you know, 600 wineries. So I think there's just a high level perspective that you have that even people who are boots on the ground working for a winery might not have. So I thought we'd play a little game where we talk about um, pitfalls, problems that you've seen wineries experience. Um, And and I know I'm not going to ask you to name a winery specifically, but um, let's call them all. Ooh, Eclipse, isn't that your winery? (laughs) Eclipse is yeah, like a, a, a fake, like made up winery for yes, exactly when we don't want to name anything. <laughs> your winery persona. So let's talk about some mistakes Eclipse made. Okay. <laughs> and um, from your perspective, you know what you would have done to kind of turn it around or prevent that from happening. Uh, well, I would have started right away without chinery. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, like you know, a few like a few things, and I think. One of the main things wineries may not take in is often marketing, you know, like that marketing aspect of wine is not always embraced. Um, and marketing is often as this like the salesy approach, you know, like you think maybe influencer or you think like discount or just like paid ads everywhere or like almost like this banners from like the 90s, you know, like click here, click here to win. But marketing is so much like bigger than that. It's really how you present your brand across all your channels, on premise, off premise, um, and it's so it doesn't have to feel you. You know, like you don't have to feel like oh, we don't do marketing. Uh, and actually, you can't afford nowadays to not think of that part. Otherwise, like, it's just very very hard. You can make the most amazing liquid, but if you don't have, you know, if you are on the Drizzly website, and you don't have a picture of your wine in there. I'm not even sure if any Drizzly would actually accept yeah. this entry. They would just be like, "We can't feature you." We know for sure if the image, like a thumbnail, like a product presentation, is not there, um, it's not like nobody's going to click and purchase. Like this is the way it is. So, like one of the sorry, long story short, one of the things I noticed is just having poor quality images on your DTC, you know, on the bottom of your website, but even what you shared with um, your other, um, you know, partners, may you call them like, uh, you know, like channels of distribution. And you can go from like poor quality, you know, like a camera that is above the lighting or just you can't read the label. Um, or even sometimes a pet peeve of mine is just having a disconnect between the product you're selling and the photo. So let's say you're selling a rosé from 2021, but your bottle is like a rosé from 2018. There's a disconnect. It might not seem big to you. It's like, hey, we haven't changed your label, but it's just, the consumer is just like, oh, it's false representation. Yeah. What else are they lying to me about? Like you're just slowly eroding um, like the confidence and compared to an accurate bottle shot representation, give or take the same price point, consumer will go to that one. It's just more trustworthy. Like you, I'm not here to taste your product, you know, like I'm physically like buying it on the screen. Yeah. So just little things. It's just like, you're so close to that sale. Like why would you lose on the, not even the last mile, but like the last meter or the last inch, <laughs> you know, and it's just like such a missed opportunity um, that way. So that's massive pet peeve of, my, pet peeve of mine. Um, like missing images, we still see it way too often you know, in your own website. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you look at the data of your, you know, like if you track uh, analytic wise, but I guarantee you, your listing that's missing an image, you're not sending it in the way that you could if only it had one. Like it's just the way it is. And then, you know, like looking at the outsider um, surveys and keeping in mind our own biology, like humans, you know, we are wired to experience a lot through vision, through our eyes. That's a most developed sense. That's how we survived in the savannah a long time ago. And this is just, we, we do make snap judgment on what it is we see. So it's just like so important to not, not miss out on that. I could just find um, that it speaks for itself. Like for example, Airbnb, which I know is a different industry, but they did a study with professional, uh, you know, the same space, the same room for rent for the night professionally shot, you know, like properly lit, properly, you know, it looks appealing versus like more like handmade, same listing, same everything, four times more chances of a booking. Right. I think the increase of like, to get to charge up to 30% more a night just because it looked enticing. So it's just like, yeah, like it just gets me really excited because I feel 
we're really just scratching the surface. And if you look at the last two years, you know, the pandemic, as the consumer behavior is moving more and more towards online purchase, anything, I think there's a bit of a disconnect. We know as an industry that it is difficult to get a product photographed properly. The consumer doesn't, and honestly, doesn't care. <laughs> That's not their problem. You know, like uh, I buy my coffee online for my local booster, roaster, um, and the images are amazing. Of course, it is easier to photograph a pack of coffee than a bottle, but yeah. as a consumer, don't care. Like this is expectation nowadays. Like even like without even talking about Amazon, just like literally Shopify website of anything. Like my cat food, my cat leader looks yeah. better on the website than a one hundred dollar bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. That's just that's, it's just wrong. Like it's just it's just confusing. And I think um, consumers are more and more like questioning or doubting it and that's why shannery hopefully kind of like levels a bit of playing ground and help um you know no matter where you're located with one area in tasmania <laughs> one area in south africa uh, just like have this high quality content so that your your brand your liquid should speak for itself and you don't shoot yourself in the foot for the for lack of great images such a shame yeah well my my hope is that anyone listening to a wine label designers podcast <laughs> would care about visuals a tiny bit. Um, you know, but I, I experience all of the same problems, you know, it's people who, um, you know, they don't appreciate the impact of what they do yeah. visually, uh, especially with DTC and like understanding how crazily the industry changed last year, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, the percentages of sales are moving online. Um, even for big wineries, I, in the report oh, yeah. this morning, they were talking about how, like a big wineries like doubled their, their spend on e-commerce in last year. Because consumer perspective has changed. Like people are more yeah. open to um, the habit of shopping for alcohol and wine. And wine. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, so yeah, I completely agree. And DTC sales for wineries are great. Your margins by default are so much better. <laughs> like yeah. it's just like if an investment, like it's such a small, like the ROI, the return on investment on this can be so massive. But again, we, we encourage people to think beyond the DTC. Like it's just... You know, uh, again, at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw a lot of wineries that wanted to be able to sell on Instacart. Instacart would not take your listing if you don't have a high quality 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel front and back bottle shot. We work with Amazon Wine Australia, so like for example, and, and the same that the requirement, like they won't, you can't even list a sale on those channels if you don't have the asset. So like, it's just the things that keeps on giving and one thing on like longevity, I think that's something I'm quite adamant when I when I build out channel and when I talk to my team is how do we stretch the longevity of this visual asset? Because I know it's an investment for wineries, even though we are affordable, like it is still a cost that, of course, like would be more fun to spend in the vineyard or maybe in the tasting room, you know, like this kind of thing. But we really want to like make those assets work for the winery on the longer term. So for example, when you start working with us. When it comes to vintage updates moving forward, as long as we're in an active, you know, relationship, uh, those are free. So, so you never have this issue I was mentioning earlier of like having this disconnect yeah. between the 2018 rosé and the 2021 you are selling. It stopped. Like you're not losing your like customers in that process. And if your rosé this year is a bit different in color, which actually happens more often than not, we also yeah. make sure that you have the correct liquid representation. Maybe it's more pink this year because you know, you have the vineyards, the winemaker has its reason, will make sure that it's a correct representation. So when it arrives at the door of the person who purchased, it's not like, well, this is weird. I don't, this is not what I ordered. Like really making it easy, streamlined. And again, no samples that are being shipped to us, which between you and I, maybe it's the biggest bummer. <laughs> I used to have so much like free wine that I could just then drink. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah I, this is gone. It's all digital. <laughs> yeah. if, if you go in our closet here at the studio, much to my embarrassment, there are like literally probably 200 bottles of wine on the floor. Like it started out on the shelf and then I was the whole floor. And I, I just, cause they're samples. Like I need to have examples of our work. And my staff is like, will you drink that already? <laughs> like, I can't. Yeah. I just, what if I need so a label from 2009? <laughs> Imagine I was literally at the end of like 2021. I was kind of looking, you know, like at the history of our channery and we keep track of all the bottle shots we deliver. And since the inception, so like four or five years ago, like we mentioned going on five, 
uh, we delivered like over 10,000 bottle shots. And that's counting, of course, vintage updates and everything. But yeah. you need a okay. warehouse for next, like, you know, and I live and I, yeah. it's a home office here. Like, so it's just like, it's just like not even possible in um, that way. So yeah, 10,000, like we want to reach, you know, 50 yeah. or 100,000 sooner rather than later. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, so you were also telling me that you are coming up with a brand new um, soft launch about Shinery Studio. Can you share a little bit more about that with us? Yeah. So again, like in that, the aim is to really help wineries like have access to imagery, like, sorry, <clears throat> visual content as easy as possible, as streamlined as possible, and to really also help them like think more creatively about like marketing and the possibilities. That's one of my biggest reward. Uh, sometimes when we work with clients, like, oh, I didn't even know it was possible. Like, oh, let's do like a short video to welcome, you know, people when they log in on the website for the first time. Like, it's just like all of this, like we just kind of like reinstill a bit of a breath of fresh air to our customers. And we just like help them like stay current, think ahead. Um, so with Outchannery Studio, uh, soft launch right now, think of it a bit like, um, I don't know if your um, audience like uses like Canva, which is like an online Photoshop, let's say, like a simplified version. So we're working on like one that is really highly geared towards uh, wineries. So it just really helps them like select um, like lifestyle images or create like already sized images for Instacart, for example, because of course all these different platforms have different requirements and settings. So you don't need to display on Instacart, you need to display on Drizzly, like just like making sure all your commerce website, you're using Wine Direct, or you're using Commerce 7, or you're using Trolley, all of these platforms have their own different settings. So how do we make it very easy for you to, you know, connect all of this and be creative? We're working on like visual tasting notes and all of that. So we're softly launching right now, but think of it as your digital little photo studio without a camera. <laughs> so I can upload my label design in in the software, build out some of these CGI renderings or? So just like starting to put the position, but then all that like CGI rendering are still done by hand, like yeah. as in by humans. And that's something that we're quite adamant. We obviously have almost like a massive Lego box of, you know, I think we have over 150 different bottle shapes right now. Yeah. I think we almost have them all, uh, you know, but it's still like crafted by hand, just like, you know, most wines, obviously, and making sure that the gold is shining exactly right in the right place, that the paper yeah. texture is exactly right. So we, we streamline the process and we help you like find and create that asset that you want at the end, but it still is being created uh, by hand um, in the back end by our channery artist. Mm -hmm. I love that hand touch. I think it's so important. That's very important. Actually, like it's something that... Um, like that wouldn't change. Of course, we want you know to streamline and shorten the time frame just to give an idea to your audience. Um, typically, for a bottle shot, uh, you just have to answer a questionnaire. You know, give us like your bottle shape, the color of your wine, the closure, upload your label and a closure file. So whatever you send to your printer, we don't need anything different. Like you should have those files. Uh, we usually uh, give you like a proof to review online. It takes about three days. If ever you have like a an urgent, urgent need, like let's say you have like a, a feature in a magazine or something like that, we can like find a way to bump you up <laughs> and try to get that proof uh, ASAP. And then once you're sure that we're happy with everything, like this proofing stage, I think is very, very important, which you usually don't get with traditional photography, making sure it's exactly the way you want it. Then we deliver, you know, in the following 24 hours, like the, the final high-res file that you can then deploy in anywhere you wish. A designer's dream. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's just like, oh, like, let's make the gold a bit more warm or let's just, you know, like, just like, just like, I don't know, like, let's get that rosé color exactly the way it is. Like, it's not, you know, like, just like, we're really, we can be pretty um, specific, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, whenever we design rosés, we're often designing a label before the production is finished. And so yeah. we're like, no, but what what exact color? <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, we do her like spectrum and we can you know and yeah. if ever on the production yeah. suddenly like your rosé color change like it's not the end of the world like we can yeah. you know reopen that fight again we never drink that wine right it always stays available in our library like 3d library so um we can like always like tweak it you know maybe a month later it's like everything is correct but actually the rosé turn out much more like pale salmon that we anticipated okay not a problem it's just like tweak it so you have 
that representation. Mm -hmm. Love it. Always doing something new. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, I get bored easily. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. That's why Vint is here. It's like, I think I want another baby. No, just kidding. I'm going to launch a no, a new division of my business. Um, <laughs> I love it. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how, um, or at least before this, this uh, podcast recording about how much bad imagery can cost you. Yeah. And I think it's such, you know, it was a quote from you. And I think it's so critical because as you're saying earlier, like the way a consumer perceives your product uh, is so, so important. And what I do like too, about your, your lifestyle imagery is it's not perfection either. Like, I think, especially with the advent of social media, TikTok, Instagram, mm -hmm. these 15 second videos, like people are, are more also open to kind of shoot from the hip and like that, that more lifestyle, mm -hmm. more authentic imagery. And I think that you guys do such a nice job of providing an array of, like you said, how elegant versus how, you know, conversational and relaxed imagery can be. And that's so important. Yeah. Um, connecting with people there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like with the pandemic, it's, it's a bit tricky, but even when we work with models, like of course models are typically good looking, but we try like not too good looking, <laughs> uh, you know, like on a normal looking and also just like, you know, without being like just politically correct for politically correct, but like, you know, different skin colors. Um, and also, you know, we did like a photo shoot, like, you know, we called it like romantic table settings and let's make sure we have representation of any kind of couple, right? Like it's not just like white male, female couple, like it's like that's, yeah. You know, those drink wine, don't get me wrong, but like, it's just like, there's more to that. So as much as we can, like, we try also to push the dial of like, what can be done. And just, it's also like, if, if we make it possible easily for wineries, it's that much easier to actually like go there. I think, you know, it's almost like you have to, to break a bit that ceiling of sorts. Uh, so that's something we're quite, um, quite excited about and, and doing it tastefully. Like, again, like, you know, we all have this image of like community college where it's just like, okay, a person in a wheelchair, a black person, an Asian person. Like, okay, yeah. we don't want that either. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's just like this. And, you know, we're like trying to find um, like the right balance and everything. Uh, but that's something that we, is really like, um, um, we pay attention to. I think it's very important. And I think wineries appreciate that as well. So that goes with like models. But we also, you know, when we develop recipes, we have, traditional recipes you know like a nice steak or something but we also do like we just shoot uh shot a series of vegan recipes that pair amazing with wine you know like we know vegan or vegetarian is booming but like it's not that many wine recipes that pair with it and we're just like let's just let's just create our own like, it's just like okay like what would be and the image turned out beautifully i can't wait to try the recipes myself like we just received them like later late last week um, but um, that's also like really like gives me the spring in the morning when I just get to work. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that we definitely have a shared value in that, you know, the, the future of the wine industry is going to look very different than it does today. And mm -hmm. you can see that in, in generational changes in sales. You can see that in wineries, you know, broader wineries kind of clamoring for how to access these younger, more diversified, you know, clients or customers, connecting mm -hmm. people in different regions, you know, coast to coast globally. Um, and, and that's a value of ours too, like making the wine mm -hmm. industry more female, more BIPOC, understanding how we can, you know, break those traditional molds of what is attractive. And I think in some ways in an Instagram era, there's, there's kind of a huge pull to the other side of like, yeah. look at these beautiful skinny white ladies drinking rosé, frolicking through <laughs> the vineyard, um, yeah. in big felt hats with mm -hmm. respect to all of those ladies. Um, but you, so I feel like on one side, you have kind of what Instagram is telling them that they need to do. But on the other side, you have all of these very genuine, diverse mm -hmm. people who love wine and who, we, who may not love wine yet or don't love yeah. those stereotypes and, and don't yeah. feel like wine is for them, um, you know, including me. You know, I think it's <laughs> something where I, I, I often don't feel marketed to by wineries. So I just love that um, that's one of and, your values. Kind of and love. reminding people, yeah. uh, I mean, and wineries and their folks like customer of wineries, like wine drinkers, how wine can be enjoyed also beyond the tables. Like we did a photo shoot uh, late last year and it was like board games, popcorn, kind of like Netflix night meets, you know, board games like with friends. It's just like, honestly, that's a lot of how I drink my wine, <laughs> you know, as a like late millennial myself. Like, you know, like it's just like, it's not just like the city with like napkin and the right forks. Like, you know, like it's just, there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. I also drink yeah. wine when I eat uh, delicious food, but there's so much more. And just like helping wineries 
remember that that's also how the product can be enjoyed and showcasing that to the wine consumer, demystifying the whole thing. Sometimes on purpose, we don't follow the right glassware for the right, because um, you know what? If you're like in a normal household and everything, you probably have just a one kind of wine glass and they will have to do for <laughs> yeah. all of it. And maybe it's a stemless glass. Oh, <gasps> stemless. Yeah, like, and it's just like, and again, we can like, you know, we have different level. Like, again, this is for one demographic, like, but we also work with very elevated, uh, like very expensive. We're talking like 300 plus dollars a bottle. And yeah. here we're going to go like the most extravagant retail wine glass because it needs to open up. And like, it's, it's not to say, again, I'm French. I love and respect great wine. Yeah. Um, but there's a place like it's just like you can't put that same weight on a $9 bottle of wine than a $300 of wine. And just think wine can be fun and lighthearted. Um, and that's something that uh, I'm enjoying discovering how to communicate that in a creative way as much as possible. We don't have all the solution, but like we, we constantly like strive to find them and explore. And I, that's going to be such a huge part of your success. And I think it already is. Uh, <laughs> I know we need to wrap up soon, but I wanted to mention how in love I am with your content. You guys have such great content. So for those listening, if you don't follow Outshinery on LinkedIn, if you don't follow them on social media, I highly, highly recommend it. They have quarterly talks called On the Spot. Um, Last June, there was this amazing guest on On the Spot. She was so good. Mm -hmm. That was me. Um, But (laughs) I've had the pleasure of, of joining you on those. But they're just so informal and informative. And I love how you are constantly providing wineries, not just with you know, your service or the function of what you do, but with great advice. Like recently, they just published 99 prompts for wineries for helping them like get motivated to create content on their own. Um, so definitely, even if you never hire a winery for a single bottle shot, I highly recommend following them and, and learning all of the great resources that they have uh, for you as a winery. Um, my goal with Vinted is to be just a tiny bit like Outshinery. So, Lori, I'm so happy to have you on. I feel so flattered. Oh, thanks so um, much. Yes. I would, but that, please, yeah, check us out. And yeah, exactly. This content is available. So it's just like you just mentioned, like motivating like the wineries and just finding the inspiration of the extra, you know, because if we all know that sometimes just like searching something on Google, like wine inspiration, Google, like that's not going to return any results. So... <laughs> we like we try to just like give you like a bit of a spark to just like get the conversation going and then you go create and display you know like showcase your brand your content but just helping you with getting unstuck staying motivated staying on track and sadly that's also marketing like constantly doing it like there's no like let's do a big push and stop it's just like ongoing and ongoing and i think sometimes it can be demoralizing so that's also how we build that content to just like help you like stay um, engage with your own uh, process. It's such a great service that you provide the broader wine community. I know I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, so I always try to wrap up these podcasts with the big question, which is what is your number one advice for moving wine? And I think we're, we know a little bit about what that's going to say already, but um, <laughs> what is the number one thing? If someone could do one thing to sell more wine, what is it? Put yourself in the shoes of the person that is buying your wine. I Ooh. think the empathy try your own, like literally try your own website or better yet, like get a friend that is getting your wine free from you already. So it's not buying on your site or like in the channels and just watch them go through it or question and just think, and it's humbling. And it's sometimes also like, oh my God, like you did all right. It's it's rare that this happens. Yeah. And just like, get empathy. Um, like I think from the consumer standpoint, because it's not just, again, so it's images and copy and like the ease of use, you know, the, the user experience. But um, I think so then it just becomes more motivating again and more real to like, oh, wow, yeah, we need to change that. Like, I didn't think about that. I think a lot of time it's just not that wineries are like, well, we really don't care about images. Like, that's never the case. It's yeah. just like, oh, we didn't realize how much of a priority of how much of an impact this could have. Like, it's more, um, it just get really get it to the bottom and then it's just suddenly it's an emergency and we don't have time and we never do it to actually like this could be like it doesn't have to be that complicated anymore and and you're leaving money on the table so just like empathy i think from a user perspective like a user slash buyer perspective that would be my main advice totally totally agree in fact we just did an entire episode on that with 
uh, Faith Hurley and Stacey Calligan from the Pinpoint Collective. So if you mm-hmm. want to learn a little bit more about Lori's advice for meeting your consumer where they are and yep. getting those insights from their perspective, I highly recommend checking that out because it dovetails perfectly with what you were just saying. Um, Lori, thank you so much for joining me today. This is so fun. Um, so on your website, people can find you. Where else can people learn more about you personally or about our chinery? Uh, LinkedIn, you can find me like my LinkedIn profile, Lori Miat, and I'm sure you're going to add this in the show notes. Uh, but yes, please stay in touch. Uh, subscribe to a newsletter. I mean, we don't do newsletter, but like, you know, subscribe yeah. to our content if you find it helpful. And like, don't hesitate to share your stories of what, honestly, we also love to hear what we can help wineries with. Uh, at the end of the day, we are not the one running a winery. So some of your, you know, pain points, we may not be able to solve them for you, but just like hearing, and just like, oh, actually, this we can do. This, you know, like this is really something. Uh, it's it's a two-way stream. Like we always love a good conversation. So LinkedIn would be the best. Uh, and then a website where you can talk with one of my teammates. And we have a little like a bot where you can like actually like um, a chat window. So during uh, Pacific time hours, happy to answer any question you have there. And yeah. sorry, just one more thing, just come yeah. to mind. You can also try us for free. <laughs> so if you want to see like the process and get, uh, you know, like a bottle shot, with your, like, seeing is believing. (laughs) So you're more than welcome. If you just go on the website, you'll see, like, a big button, like, try for free. And the first bottle shot is on us. And you can really then see how it works, what it takes, and the results. Um, So I would encourage people that are on the fence or just very curious to give that a try. And also, like, I I was just thinking, too, I'd be remiss to not mention, to get a bottle shot and then also get it in a lifestyle image is, like, hundreds of dollars. It's not thousands of dollars. Like, Oh yeah. Really? Like I cannot stress how affordable Outshinery is. So if you're listening to this thinking like, and also I am not paid by Outshinery. <laughs> it's not a sponsor. Like it's I true. just love what you're doing because you know, things that would literally cost three to five thousand dollars to shoot in studio are, are like a few hundred dollars without shinery. Yeah. So highly, highly, highly recommend. I wouldn't have you on the show if I didn't. Um, but thank you so much for your time today. For everyone listening, so much, uh, check out the website, vent.studio for show notes. And as always, reach out to me with any questions or podcast requests. And we'll see you on the next episode of Vinted. Sounds great. Bye. Bye. Tune in for the next Vinted. Subscribe today. For future episodes, marketing advice, and more, follow me on Instagram at Scout Driscoll. Learn more about Vince Design and Branding Services for wineries at www.vint.studio.